Hey friends, happy new year. Welcome to 2024. Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. Hey, Lane, you don't look any different, Lane. Neither do you. Well, your hair looks like you might have had a little trim. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting sure. As the season, I'm already planning for the season. First thing is get all that hair off my head. So, yeah. <laughs> so Happy welcome. New Year. Happy That's 2024. For sure. I mean, I cannot believe it's 2024. Uh, I just can't even believe it. But mm. I am so excited for just... Because now we're like on the ski slope. We're at the top of the mountain. It is just downhill from here. Just so much fun stuff happening. And um, so welcome, friends. So this is um, this podcast, Seed Talk, is brought to you by thegardenersworkshop.com, where we'd love to have you drop in. We have tons of resources over there, and you can hook up with us and explore those. So Lane, what are we talking about today? Well, today we are going to be talking about a seed, a flower that matches Pantone's color of the year for 2024. So, you know, we're not going to pass up an excuse to talk about a favorite flower. So that's what we'll be doing today. And we did it last year. So it's becoming a bit of a tradition. Okay. And I love the name. What's the, what's the color name? Oh, we'll find out in just a minute. Oh, so she, she is just, she's (laughs) making us wait y'all. All right, let's take it away. Let's find out what this color is and what we can grow because I think it's really helpful as a, especially as a grower to like have suggestions of those flowers that you may not even realize is available in some of those colors. So that's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Okay, So Pantone, it's probably best known for its color matching system. But in addition to that, there's a Pantone Color Institute that's been selecting a color of the year since the year 2000. And there's a lot of research and analysis and trend forecasting that goes into it. And eventually they select a color of the year that they believe represents what's going on in the world and our culture in general at this point in time. And the color of the year announcements are very highly anticipated and the chosen color goes on to influence all sorts of different industries, including potentially the color palettes for weddings and the flowers at those weddings. But our favorite thing about the Pantone Color of the Year is, as I mentioned, just getting to pick a flower that we think matches that color story. For sure. I mean, yes, yes. So you might remember that the color of the year for last year, for 2023, was called Viva Magenta, and it was a really bold magenta color. It was supposed to be, quote unquote, expressive of a new signal of strength, brave, and fearless. And our corresponding flower pick was Zinnia Uproar Rose. Woo! Yes. A favorite, for sure. A favorite, definitely. And the color of the year for 2024 is much softer, it's much more muted, and it has an adorable name, like Lisa was alluding to earlier. It's called Peach Fuzz, and Pantone describes it as an appealing peach hue nestled between pink and orange. And I'll just read some quotes directly from Pantone about this color. So they said it's Subtly sensual, peach fuzz is a heartfelt peach hue, bringing a feeling of kindness and tenderness, communicating a message of caring and sharing, community and collaboration. A warm and cozy shade highlighting our desire for togetherness with others or for enjoying a moment of stillness and the feeling of sanctuary this creates. And then I'll just read some quotes as to why they chose peach fuzz as the color of the year. They said that at a time of turmoil in many aspects of our lives, our need for nurturing, empathy, and compassion grows ever stronger, as does our imaginings of a more peaceful future. We're reminded that a vital part of living a full life is having the good health, stamina, and strength to enjoy it. That in a world which often emphasizes productivity and external achievements, it is critical we recognize the importance of fostering our inner selves and find moments of respite, creativity, and human connection amid the hustle and bustle of modern life. We're focusing on health and well-being, both mental and physical, and we're cherishing what's special, the warmth and comfort of spending time with friends or family, or simply taking a moment of time to ourselves. Wowza, I'm loving this. I know. I'm thinking about it. I mean, peach fuzz. Did you know that Steve's family were peach farmers? No. Yeah, the peach orchard. And here's the story. When I was a little girl, we used to drive. I lived in Midtown Newport News. Steve and his family lived in North End of Newport News. We would drive, our family would drive up here and buy peaches. We don't know that we bought them from his dad, but it's quite possible. 
Oh, I'm sure you did. Oh my goodness. I mean, so peach is, peach is a really important thing. We literally have peach orchard equipment from the 30s and the 40s upstairs in our attic. And what is thing. peach orchard equipment? Like um, heaters, like you mm -hmm. would, um, they were kerosene burners that they would put out in the orchards when the threat of um, frost was coming at the wrong time or smokers for insects and all kinds, I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff. We just can't throw it away. You know, of we would never not. use it, but yeah, it's pretty cool. So, so I love you, the name. What do you think about the color and the reasoning behind the color? I think it is great. I think it is a very warm, fuzzy, literally feeling when I look at that color. It um, is. Especially because I, I think of the flowers that are this color and that really warms me up too, you know? Yeah. So once this color was announced, Lisa and I kind of looked at the whole color story. This is quite a light color, but if you look at some of the other pictures that Pantone put out that correspond to this whole color family, we both thought of the same flower that we wanted to share. And it is a coxcomb, a celosia. It's the type that looks like a velvety brain, for those of you not familiar with coxcomb. And it is a type called Jura Salmon. I mean, is that not gorgeous? Yeah, it's and absolutely beautiful. And there really is variation in the color. You know, there's darker. You can see on the left, there are some darker heads. And on the right, there's some lighter blush even colors that are mixed in there. Um, we are super excited about Jura Salmon. Yeah, and that's what I was just going to point out is it has all these really beautiful variations of peach apricot and salmon tones. So on one end of the spectrum, there might be a really light tones like the peach fuzz Pantone color, but there are also these really saturated, rich salmon tones that are just absolutely yes. gorgeous. And this is a special seed for the gardener's workshop because it's another one like the Texas plumes celosia that we're actually having grown for us. And Jura salmon is a seed that was widely available before, and then it kind of fell out of production. So why was it worth reviving, Lisa? Why was this something you wanted to bring back? So we grew a lot of this when the seed was available. Um, and, you know, we sold primarily commercially to florist. And I never had enough. I mean, you could never, ever grow enough of this color. It just, I mean, it was beautiful in a mixed bouquet because it's not... It still was beautiful, but our florist just, I mean, for um, casket covers, for weddings, for every, they could just use it in so many ways. And then when um, the seed went unavailable, which we understand why, it is not a good seed producer. So right. for the volume of plants that our grower grew, um, there's not nearly as much production, which is what leads to why the seed is a little bit pricier than some of the others. I mean, you once you start diving into it, you get you understand, right? Um, but it's just a great color. I love it with all the colors. I mean, it is gorgeous with lime green. And I'm just thinking of all the times that we made bouquets with it. So we're super excited that it is back, that it is yeah. back. And it's an open pollinated cultivar. It's branching, which not all coxcombs are branching. So that's something else. And I did reach out to Emily Neckel, who is the one who grew the seed for us. And she had some commentary about what it was like to grow this for seed. So she said that every head had to be cleaned two times because the seed was so difficult to remove. And coxcomb proved much slower to dry in general compared to the celosia plumes, so compared to when she grew the Texas plumes for us. And this line was a very poor seed producer in terms of the volume of seed they got out of it compared to the plumes. So they harvested about one pound per 50 feet for the Texas plumes, but less than half that for this Jura salmon. Yeah, I mean, so it just makes you understand why big seed producers stop producing certain seeds that fall into this difficult category. So, yeah. So Emily grew it for us this past year and we've just packaged it up and it is available now. So if you'd like some Jura salmon in your life, I will put the link for that in the show notes. And you will not be sorry. <laughs> yeah, you won't be sorry. And so it's a brancher. And I mean, Emily had excellent results. Pinch, she pinched her plants. So what you're looking at is pinched plants. So, and I think something else that it's just another great attribute of celosias in general 
And this is no different. The foliage on these stems, you don't have, they hydrate really well. You don't have to worry about them wilting, right? So you can leave a little more foliage on them. So they're really useful um, as filler and the foliage is um, just not problemsome as it, as some other stems can be. And so it's just all around a great, easy to grow as long as you're hot, give them full sun, um, and you don't have a ton of rain. I mean, we get our fair share of rain here. You know, coxcomb is in my top 10 cash crops and has been for 20 years. Um, so give them what they love and they are just amazing. And in this color, oh my goodness gracious, they're just so beautiful. They're beautiful. And there's nothing that looks like coxcomb. Nothing. nothing. And they last forever and they dry. So yeah. it's pretty, it's pretty a pretty, a crop that you can have a wide window of harvest. So we love it for that. Yeah. Well, that was it for this episode, but we'd also like to hear from you. Which flowers do you think of that fit this peach fuzz color or even just a peach or apricot coloration in general? So are there any flowers that instantly come to mind for you, Lisa? Well, of course there's zinnias that come in salmon. Oh, yes. There's the Benares giant, the salmon, and, oh, and then there's several plume celosias. Selway has a salmon and a terracotta that fall in there. Yeah. Sunday has a couple of colors that could definitely go that way. Um, and yeah, I mean, and there's, I'm sure there's snapdragons and I oh, yes. know that there's also sweet Williams. And I also think of some varieties of straw flower. There's some beautiful status stock, right? Yeah. I mean, it's endless. It is. So feel free to share with us your flower pick for this peach fuzz color. You can share that over on YouTube in the comments, or you can fill out the form linked in the show notes and let us know what you think. But thanks so much for joining us again and for kicking off another year with us here on Seed Talk. And just make sure to follow or subscribe wherever you're watching or listening so you don't miss any of our future episodes. And you know, Lane, what I just thought about? We, we haven't even introduced ourselves for a long time. And I know we have lots of new listeners. So we'll just give it real brief here. So my name is Lisa Mason Ziegler and I am um, the head bottle washer at the Gardener's Workshop, which started as a little cut flower farm 25 years ago that has grown into an amazing educational platform. You can learn all about it over at thegardenersworkshop.com where Lane is the seed manager. Yes, I'm the seed manager over at the Gardener's Workshop. My background is actually in engineering, so I'm a very detailed person. I love delving into the science behind various concepts. And I'm a home gardener. Lisa would probably call me a crazy home gardener. <laughs> I start a lot of things from seed, a lot of annuals, but also a lot of perennials. And I just love growing things and just so happy to be sharing that with all of you here on Seed Talk. Yeah, it just makes it, it's kind of fun to be able to talk about what we're doing, right? I mean, that's is. gardening and farming and flowers, but most of all, we love helping other people to do it. So, all right, friends, just thought it occurred to me, maybe you don't even know who we are. So <laughs> head true. over to thegardenersworkshop.com and we have a ton of stuff. Yeah. All right, Lane, anything else? Nope, just like I said, make sure to follow or subscribe because we're going to have a lot of great seed starting and flower growing content coming your way in 2024. All right, friends, till we meet again. Ciao. Bye.